A rectangular prism has a surface area of 847 cubic centimeters. Mine had a typo. Yours does not. Its length is three centimeters longer than its width. Its height is one half of its width. What are the dimensions of this prism? I don't know. Let's just jump right in. Here's what I do know, with, given the picture. I have a width, I have a length, I have a height. If you mix up those letters, it's not gonna be a huge deal. It's gonna work. And the volume of this thing is going to be width times length times height in whatever order you want to write it. So I'm just going to put W-L-H. There we go. Let's just do that. Now, as you read this, you're going to realize, again, that the volume is 847. And now we'll just start reading a little more carefully. You can get overwhelming sometimes, but let's just read carefully. If its length is three centimeters longer than the width, the length is three centimeters longer than the width. You can also call it W plus three instead of three plus W. And its height is one half of its width. Oh, stop right there. Everything here is in terms of W. So W, three plus W, one half W. Okay, so how are we gonna solve it? Now, we're gonna end up with the cubic over here. If we multiplied everything out, it would totally be cubic. And we can do that, and I'd love to. It would be hours of fun, but it would be hours of fun. <laughs> Not quite hours. Here's what I'm gonna do, and you can do this on Desmos. Y equals this side, Y equals this side. We did a similar problem with surface area, and I'm gonna do mine on a graphing calculator. You can do yours. Not on a graphing calculator. <laughs> you can use Desmos, whatever you wanna use. All right, so 847, again, 847, Y equals 847 is a horizontal line. And as I type this side, I'm not gonna use W, I'm gonna use X. You'll do the same thing if you're using software, like Desmos. One half X. And I'm gonna graph. So I just graph it, and you graph it, and we look at it, and we realize, well, I don't know what I'm looking at. I'm looking at a cubic function, but I'm also supposed to be looking for 847. What? 847? 847 is way the snot up here. I mean, we're just way, way, way yonder up here. And so given that I'm looking for 847 and where it intersects with this, that changes things a bit. So I need to adjust my window. You will too if you're using Desmos. I'm gonna do a little trick here where I go from zero to 15, it's a guess, and then zoom fit. You don't have to know those steps on the calculator. And there's 847. There's my cubic function that doesn't look as cubic right now given the window. But what I do know is that they meet right there. Now, I don't know where that is. You can click on yours and find yours probably pretty easily, but mine's gonna take a little bit more work. I'm gonna find a point of intersection. You can ignore all the things I'm typing, but I got 11. X equals 11, which really means W is 11, right? Because, you know, W is X in what we're dealing with in terms of the technology. So they asked for the dimensions of the prism. So final answer, what color do you want the final answer to be? The purple that looks like the blue? Sure, why not? So the final answer is 11 centimeters. Where's your good centimeters? I was looking right there. The volume is cubic centimeters, then the lengths are going to be in terms of centimeters. And this is three plus W, so that must be 14 centimeters. And the height is half of 11, so it must be five and a half centimeters. 